everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So working some more on vines and maybe a bit of pillar today, getting past that sort of pillar bit and into the wall more. But uh, yeah, there's uh, quite a few colors here, so we'll see what kind of number I managed to put up today. Let's see. That always slows me down, but hopefully makes the stitching interesting. Oh, not the best beginning, huh? <laughs> My threads ended up all extremely uneven. All right, let's give that another shot. Yeah, I don't know what, how we managed to get those that messed up. from a clean edge here that should hopefully work better well if it's going to uh be like that i'd rather it happens on the front so i can see it right away <laughs> instead of on the back and then you stitch through it and then yeah it is a huge snarl yeah i found one once and i decided to fix it and then after i was sort of halfway through i thought i should have just left it but by then it was too late, yeah. I'd already clipped threads and things, so there was nothing for it but to keep on trying to fix it. Yeah, so it's actually looking quite nice out there. Cold, but sunny and clear blue sky, so that's certainly, certainly nice. Yeah, we actually had a little bit of frost this morning, but yeah, compared to previous years, or sometimes we have a foot of snow by now. I am not going to complain. Yeah, I've noticed we have quite a few ducks and geese still hanging around. Usually they've started migrating for the winter, but I guess because it's unseasonably warm this year, they've stuck around for longer. Or at least it certainly seems that way. Yeah, I'm past 22%, and I think I have two more sessions before the end of the month, and I wanted to reach 23%, so we will see. It'll be close. It certainly won't be the 25% that I originally hoped for, but yeah. I was a bit too ambitious with that goal. That'll be for next month. I haven't done the math as to whether that 25% will take me, will uh, finish the rest of this pass or not. My goal is to have that, the rest of this pass completed by the end of the year, which I think should be, should be doable. So. Yeah, so I've got some darker colors here, so I think I can safely carry this one across the back. Three, four, and then I'm just gonna unthread it for now because it's going to be a while before I use that color again. Oh, what am I? Oh, I missed something, didn't I? Yeah, one. Goodness, what have I done here? Okay. Oh, you see what I did? Yes, I just see what I did. I picked up this one and parked it over here, and that's not what it's supposed to be. Oh my gosh. <laughs> not the cleverest thing I've ever done. No, indeed. Two, three. Okay, just going to count here and make sure everything matches. I tell you. Yeah. Okay, so that means I missed, I marked this as done when it's not done. 
Okay. Yeah, I will do that next. And actually, I probably won't be carrying that one. So I'm going to unpark it there. Oh, I tell you. And I missed doing a stitch with this thread. My goodness. <laughs> oh. Yeah, if you're watching my channel expecting perfection, that, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, I tell ya. Okay, now we're back on track. <laughs> oh, starting with a snarl. Oh yeah, and then I actually still have to do this one. I marked it as done, but it's not. Because I picked up the wrong darn thread. Yeah. I wasn't paying attention to my grid lines cross check. But that's how when I came to this navy blue, I realized something wasn't right. Things were not matching up. Just zoom out a bit whether it's worth putting this out in my tray or not i don't have many colors out so i think i will i wouldn't normally put one that doesn't have as many stitches in this area but there's not many colors in my tray so it's not like i'm taking a space away from a color that i will need it more okay now we are back on track Ooh. dropping needles <laughs> somewhere Ah, there it is. Yeah, I knew there was a loose one and I wanted to find it before it got lost in my, uh, in my grime guard. And I might find it again painfully later. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, like I said, this is why I take the time to grid, because when I make mistakes, it's much easier to figure out where I went wrong when I have those landmarks to cross-check from. Although I may invest in some pre-gridded fabric for a later project, we'll see. So yeah, I have a, t a couple of big uh, Thomas Kincaid projects planned. I do have some 14 count big enough to work on, uh, to work them on, but I may work it on 18 count so that it's a little bit smaller. And in which case, I may buy some of the uh, the stuff that's pre gridded. There's one brand somebody said where the gridding is actually in between and not on one of the the rows of stitches which is what i prefer so i'm gonna try and try buying some of that and see what i think yeah, i doubt i'm gonna go any higher than 18 though i don't want to have to wear magnifiers i admire people who work on really high counts but yeah it is not for me Okay, nine, three, four. Yeah, there was somebody in one of the groups I was in who was working on, oh, she, she's, it wasn't fabric that was normally for cross stitch. So it was like 60 count or something ridiculous like that. I was just like, wow, my, uh, <laughs> my hat is off to you because holy cow, I cannot imagine trying to work on fabric that tiny. Oh my gosh. I get a headache just thinking about it. <laughs> Yeah, they did only tent stitch, not full cross stitch, because, yeah, 
even with one strand, there's no way it would be way too bulky on fabric that small. Oh my gosh, you are just okay. So sometimes when it's doing that on these really short pieces, and I don't really want to trim it any further because it's super short, I will actually thread the loop part through the eye of the needle rather than the ends so that it doesn't shred the floss. Yeah. So yeah, we're at 67,923 done. So we should pass 68. Yeah, I don't think I will reach 70 by the end of the month, maybe, but I doubt it. So especially since it's now moving into more higher confetti area. Yeah, to reach 23% completed is less than 3,000 stitches, so we'll see. But yeah, if I don't, well, then I don't. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I've seen a few people around riding their motorbikes and <laughs> getting in the last ride of the of the year. Yeah, there's um one neighbor who has a Corvette <clears throat> and he drives it until the last possible minute. Like it's <clears throat> pardon me, definitely not a winter vehicle for around here. And yeah, last year he left it a little too long and we got a big snowfall. And he needed about four guys to help him get it out of the snow drift so he could go take it to where he stores it for the uh the winter. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he didn't uh plan because there was it was forecasted that we were gonna get a big bunch of snow. And he should have done it the day before. <laughs> yeah, he did it the day after. But he did finally manage to get it out of the driveway. So, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people around here will often have a vehicle that is a summer vehicle. Not one for all year round. Well, my husband has his old 88 Honda Prelude that he, uh, he rebuilt with his dad when he was in high school or he just finished high school or something yeah and uh yeah it's definitely not a car you can drive in the snow it's it's low they lowered it and uh yeah it's great for going fast and cornering but uh, yeah definitely not a winter vehicle Okay, 160. Oh, oh dear. Unfortunately, I didn't have the greatest night's sleep. <laughs> I had a really good night's sleep the night before, but yeah, getting two in a row is just uh, harder to get than elephant's ear on a bun, as my mom used to say. <laughs> yeah, people don't really use that expression as much anymore. Yeah, it was actually kind of funny. Is um, One of my favorite... Um, 
episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation is the Darmok episode, which is where the guys, they meet some aliens who basically all they do is talk in metaphors. And, uh, they, you know, I said Star Trek predicted meme culture. But they said, I mean, even on our own planet, yeah. Even if you're just a generation apart from the memes referenced, you won't understand it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, if you don't know the cultural reference, you can be very lost, even though it's the same uh, the same language. Yeah, I often say, like, I, I've read quite a few time travel books, and there was only one where the guy actually had difficulty communicating, even though everyone was speaking English, but because it was set in, like, medieval times, then, um, yeah, it's technically the same language, but language is fluid, right? It changes a lot. Meanings of words change over time so that yeah, you could be saying the same words and they could mean something very different. Like I remember learning that adorable used to mean like more like reverent, worthy of being adored. And now when you say adorable, it means you, like you think something's really super cute, right? And it's, yeah, it might be similar as in you adore it because it's so cute, but that's not what it originally meant. Yeah. Yeah, so in that book that actually did it correctly, the guy, he ended up going back into, like, into someone else's body kind of thing. Like, his mind was in the guy's body, and so he, the guy had almost died, or I guess had died, and that's how he ended up in the guy's, you know, um, his consciousness in this guy's. But anyway, so he basically told people that he had hurt his head in the injury, and so if his speech didn't make sense, that was why, yeah sort of to keep himself from being seen as like a warlock or something. <laughs> yeah. And that he basically had to, it was almost like learning a new language, so yeah. Mm. Well, it's like, um, like I said, trying to learn uh, Hungarian, and I was looking up vocabulary words, and it said, you know, difficult, and was like bonyolut or something. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. And then it showed it in a sentence, and they didn't use the word. It said nehaze. And I said to my husband, like, how does that conjugate to nehaze? Like, that's not even the same word. It's not like, you know, usually the ending is different or something. But he said, oh, well, that's because, yeah, when you when you say it, you don't actually say that it's difficult work. You're technically saying it's heavy work. And the word heavy is nehaze. So, yeah. So, like, in English, you would say it's difficult work. But in Hungarian, you say it's heavy work. You use the word difficult more to, I think he said, um, describe someone's personality. That they're, like, a difficult to person to deal with versus this is hard work. So, Yeah. I'm really glad that I have an actual speaker of the language to help me because I would have been like so confused and they unfortunately did not explain that very well because yeah there was a few people in the comments saying like how is this the same word it's not even close and it's like yeah it's because it is actually a different word they should have explained that a little bit better mm. Well, of course, I say good to have a native speaker, but then I probably wouldn't be trying to learn it if I wasn't married to someone who spoke it. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> uh, it was funny because um, they had some friends who were from the same country, and uh, my husband and I were maybe a year married, and she asked if I, if I was learning any, and I said, oh, I hadn't yet, and oh, she was so offended that I wasn't learning it. I was like, my in-laws, they didn't care, you know? <laughs> They said they recognize that they're very different languages and very hard to learn, especially when you're an adult, you know, so, but, yeah. Yeah, that's why even though their youngest kids were born here in Canada, they all are bilingual because they made sure to speak both languages at home, so, yeah. The two oldest were born in Hungary, so of course they speak it. That was the only language they spoke, you know, till they came to Canada. But, um, but uh, yeah, the youngest kids also 
speak it. And well enough that uh, when they did go to Hungary, people thought they were locals. Because, yeah, they, they went and asked some people for directions. And they're like, well, why are you asking? Don't you live here? I thought, oh, I said to my husband, I thought you guys would have enough of like a Canadian accent by now that it would be noticeable. But I guess not. <laughs> Because, yeah, a lot of times, you know, people, even if English isn't their first language, if they live in an English-speaking country for long enough, it will, you know, affect affect the language after a while because you pick up the, uh, the accent of, you know, the language where you're living. My mom lived in England for a few years, and she still has a bit of an English accent, even though, I mean, she's been in Canada for way longer than she ever lived in England, but yeah. We would tease her about it because my dad said that when she said squirrel, she would it sounded like square hole. <laughs> so yeah, he would bug her squirrels. Yeah. Yeah, I actually read a story supposedly that a spy was caught that way because he spoke English very well, but then somebody asked him and he couldn't pronounce it and it kind of gave away that he, yeah, that his first language wasn't English. Yeah, that it was German. I said, yeah, but I bet tr an English-speaking person trying to say whatever squirrel is in German probably wouldn't do much better. Ooh. Well, it's like in that movie um, that Michael Fassbender was in. What was it? I can't remember. But um, he, uh, he speaks German, so they have him basically go undercover, and he gets busted because he says to the bartender, bring three glasses and he he does it with like this and in German they do it like this with the two first fingers and the thumb not the three middle fingers and that was what gave away that uh yeah he wasn't a native German something that simple yeah that you wouldn't even think to tell somebody right like because yeah like they said you have to be careful about using hand gestures in other countries because something that's completely innocuous here could be highly offensive in another in another culture so like in some cultures they said pointing with your first finger is seen as very aggressive and rude and they use the middle finger whereas in north america that would be seen as rude you know so it's like yeah you got to be really careful i said my i might not do so well considering i talk with my hands a lot <laughs> so oh okay yeah barely any colors here that are two stitches of the same color in a row. This is going to be slow going, but it'll be worth it in the long run for that detail. I know that. But yeah, my son will laugh because I'll be stitching and he'll hear me say, oh, bloody confetti, which he thinks is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. But then as much as I complain about that, when they're a huge section of the same color, I can get bored. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's funny because most people have a love-hate relationship with confetti, but then there was one lady in the group I'm in who said, oh, she prefers it because it's more interesting. So, Yeah, it's funny those saying about accents. My uh, my husband still has uh, a Hungarian accent, and he doesn't realize that he does. Yeah, but uh, yeah, there'll be people say, "Oh, so where are you from?" Because he and he doesn't think it's that noticeable. I'm like, "No, it, it is." I knew immediately when I met you that you must have spoken a different language before you spoke English. Yeah, his brother is a year younger. Yeah, they're very close in age, and um, they're like a year and four days apart. Yeah. And uh, his brother worked really hard to drop his accent. And yeah, you can't really tell. My, uh, my sister-in-law, his wife, just says, except when he's tired. She says when he's really tired, the Hungarian accent will come back. But other than that, yeah.
But yeah, people will be sometimes quite surprised when they meet my mom because she's Chinese, but she has a westernized name and uh, she sounds like an English lady. So yeah, it's not what they're expecting when they meet her. Mm. Definitely a flower here, not just vines. With all this purple and pink. Okay, 3608. Oh, pardon me. Oh, a lot of that color still left. Yeah, I'm there's a lot more pink flowers lower down in this pattern. We'll use a lot of this. Only a bit up here. Super, super short, just barely able to get one stitch out of that. Oh, darn. Ah, yeah, I had a feeling. I was drawing this across the back and only one strand stayed in the needle. So I want to make sure I secure both before I trim it because otherwise it's not going to stay. Here. Yeah, we don't want that. There we go. Yeah, I thought they didn't feel quite like they were coming out of the same spot on the back of the fabric there. And they were not. Okay, 208. Oops. Sounds like somebody's starting up a lawnmower or something out there. It's pretty noisy. <laughs> Could be too cold to want to start one. Kind of sounds like a snowblower, but I mean, there's no snow, so. Yeah, I finished going through all the old video I had and man like a third of the videos were all just of my kid wanting to look at himself because we had the old camcorder that had the little tv viewer on the side and he always wanted us to flip it so he could look at himself and it's like he would never do what I was trying to catch on film he just wanted to stand there looking at himself waving and stuff because he was fascinated by it because of course unlike a mirror there's a delay because it would record and then you know output it onto the little viewer but yeah it's like so many of him, you know, see baby, see baby. I'm like, dude, no, do what you were doing. And, and then giving up and putting the camera away. And so many of them starting in the hallway because I was trying to sneak up on him and catch what he was, uh, what he was doing on film. Oh, uh, kids for you. <laughs> Yeah, I found a couple of videos with um, 
him with my niece, so I have to remember to send those to my sister because I don't think she has them. Well, because they weren't digitized, right? So, yeah. Yeah, it was funny because I remember we bought that camcorder and we bought the top of the line, which had um, discs. And then they called trying to sell me an extended warranty and talking about how once a year we could have it brought in for service and, like, they would take it out and clean out the tape track and stuff. And I'm like, there's no tape track in this. It doesn't run on tapes. <laughs> because, yeah, I remember... When my parents got the first camcorder, it was eight millimeter tape, so they look like a little um, VHS tape. Yeah. And actually, I remember you could buy movies that could play in the camcorder. You could hook it up to your TV, and it would go show up on the TV. And uh, yeah, but it never caught on, but I guess they were kind of trying to make that a, a thing. Yeah, we, they were given one free movie. I think it was A Few Good Men or something, but yeah. That was it. We never bought any more. Yeah, there was somebody saying, you know, can we just not make anything after Blu-ray? Because I'm sick of restarting my uh, collection every time. I said, well, if I have something on DVD, I'm not buying it on Blu-ray. I don't care if the picture quality is better. <laughs> Plus, I mean, it really depends. They said for older, older movies... The quality isn't going to look that much better if the source material isn't better. You know, it kind of depends how they recorded it. I know they said, like, when it comes to Star Trek, um, Deep Space Nine and Voyager were filmed basically on VHS film. And so the quality is not as good as, say, The Next Generation, which they was actually filmed on, like, well, more high-quality film. And so they were actually able to go back and remaster it and... Yeah, but like if you see broadcasts on TV, the picture for that is way sharper and clearer than it is for Deep Space Nine and Voyager. We have those on DVD, but yeah, you can still tell there's a difference in the, the picture quality. Well, I guess at the time they were making it, which was 90s, it just had to be good enough for broadcast, right? They didn't realize people were going to want to buy it for <laughs> for personal viewing. Or about quality issues later down the road, yeah. Because, yeah, like I said, it's if you can only get so much detail depending on the source, what it was originally captured on. Yeah, the old um, cellulose film they used to have is super flammable. They said you're not even allowed to take it on planes because it's that flammable. Because basically once it catches fire, it kind of keeps feeding on itself and making it hotter. And yeah, there was a huge fire way back at MGM decades ago. And they lost so much footage that was never recoverable. Yeah. Because of course, no such thing as digital backup then. But yeah. So they said like it makes a very sharp, clear image. But the problem is it's, uh, yeah extremely flammable and like it can even just catch fire like spontaneously as it degrades so yeah that's why they don't really use it anymore yeah because this i remember they're saying there's a bunch of unused footage from cleopatra that was filmed with uh, elizabeth taylor and yeah it was it was lost in that fire. Whole bunch of, whole bunch of stuff was lost. That, yeah, it's not replaceable, unfortunately. Yeah, I found an old film when uh, I totally forgotten when our son was like two. Um, at my husband's work, they had the pumpkin carving contest for um, for uh, work. And so he actually took the horn out of his truck and put it in the pumpkin with a button to push. And yeah, all day people were pushing it and then jumping and screaming because it was way louder than they thought. And he carved the pumpkin to make it look like its eyes were squeezed closed and its mouth was open like it was yelling. <laughs> yeah, he won that year, I think. Uh, I said, yeah, you know. When your dad's an engineer, you get all the upgraded stuff. Our kiddo had a toy box as a house, and his dad actually put a light in it with a little switch that worked. Yeah. 
yeah he brought the box home from work because it was when they bought like a brand new photocopier so it's a huge box and yeah yeah well i remember when our parents bought a new fridge and it came in a box so yeah we had uh we had a lot of fun with that <laughs> I think that's one of those things that's kind of timeless for kids. Yeah, you want to play in the box. <laughs> okay, very slowly but surely filling in this. And this square here. Yeah, it's taken over half an hour to get to 50 stitches. Usually I could have about 100 done when it's not this much confetti. take a look at this thread. I think I decided. Yeah, it's longer. Okay, so first I'm going to fill in that one stitch there. Park. And then this one. Carry it around a bit. That corner. That corner. Right, we are back. Yeah, I thought maybe I could ignore that noise, but it just kept getting louder and louder and louder. So, <laughs> yeah, they were running a wood chipper. So, it looks like they're done now. So, machine's off and there's no more branches on the ground. So, I think we're safe to finish here. I think they're done. Yeah. Yeah, I thought maybe it was a lawnmower or something at first, but then it just got super loud and that was it for me I figured it would probably be too distracting for you all too and irritating so yeah decided to stop recording cut all that noisy part out and start over again <laughs> it's more pleasant a break and waited for the noise to stop yeah i mean i'm not doing purely sound recording but still it was yeah loud enough to uh to be a problem Lots of confetti stitches here. I've not reached 100 total yet. And there has been a lot of, a lot of color changing, which slows things down. Yeah, well, every
everybody's trying to get all their end of fall stuff done before we hit winter. Because, yeah, once it's snow out, you're not going to be wanting to do <laughs> any landscaping, that's for sure. Yeah, and there's been a few people I pass by their houses on my walk who are rushing to get their roof fixed before before the snow comes. Ooh, pardon me. I think I'll take this one out into my tray as well, at least for now. Still a lot of this color left. I can see over 5,000 stitches of it still. Did that because I think yes this is long enough I'm gonna carry it back up I can do all three of those stitches in one go What was that? <laughs> sure what that was. It's a noisy recording day today. Did not expect it to be. Uh, uh, don't always have control over that. <laughs> that might have been somebody putting something in my mailbox. The lid can get stuck and be quite creaky, so that might have been what that was. It is about the time that deliveries and such come, so... Okay, one sixty. Oh, my oh dear. Oh. tell immediately it was beside the correct spot, not actually on it. Oh, I think, let me take a look, two, three, 
Yeah, I, I parked something wrong here. This is parked correctly now. One, two, three, okay. So let's take a look at what else I've got here, I think. Oh yeah, these are both parked one square up from where they should be because probably I parked one and then I parked the next one off of what was already there and the first one was wrong. So, yeah. I should always count for my grid lines, but I don't. <laughs> I should, but that doesn't mean I do. <laughs> yeah. That is all right, though, because I can just recount and park correctly. Now it's fixed. Okay, so one seventeen. Lots of little pieces of this color to use up. Yeah, this is one that's sort of scattered quite a lot, so you end up with quite a lot of leftover pieces, but there's always places to use them up later, I find. This square was a lot of different colors. I didn't count up exactly how many, but it was quite a few. Well, we're past 68,000 complete, so that's nice. I will... I'm going to work until I get 100 even. Or at least past 100, anyway. Yeah. Trying to fill in all of this square here. As you can see, I've gone a little bit over on the one side because the colors spilled over. I don't stick to square by square. Yeah, some people prefer to. It's all just a matter of preference. Okay.
Okay, this thread here, I decided to use the one thread to carry around. I'm going to have to do a bunch, but uh, it's not that long, so I think I'm just going to add, yeah, use up a small piece here. And I won't have to fill in everything above it first. Okay, so I think I can finish up everything else in this square. So I've reached 100, but I'm going to finish this square before I call it a day, because why not? So I've got four stitches in a row here, so I'm going to use an away thread with some leftover pieces here. So once I put one stitch in, you give it a little, a little pull. You can tell if it didn't catch on the back, it'll pop right out. And then once you have three wraps on the back, you can be sure it is secure. It's not going to go anywhere. So then I just pull that piece to the back and done. Lots of purples here. There's a dog starting up again, but I find the sound of him barking doesn't get picked up that much by my camera, but the sound of that wood chipper definitely did, so. why I decided to cut that part out because yeah 
Oh dear. Oh my gosh, I do not have luck today. Oh, I guess they hung up. <laughs> All right then. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, that was my old landline, which I rarely get calls on, but I kind of can't make myself get rid of the number because I know there's probably a few contacts I have that don't have that any other number. So, well, the thing is I only pay 10 bucks a month now because um, it's technically not even actually a landline anymore. It's the same number as my old landline, but it's like a internet one or whatever. Yeah. And for that cheap, I figured I'll keep it and then, yeah. Well, there's some places I didn't feel like giving my cell phone to, right? <laughs> but they might still need to contact me, so. Okay, 327. Yeah, although like one of my friends said, she feels like she only keeps the landline around for uh, telemarketers. So that was why she finally got rid of hers. Yeah, because that was all she was getting messages from yeah they get um my husband got one the other day that uh it sounded like a person but uh after a while we realized it was an ai <laughs> yeah because when you would answer you would hear this sort of unnatural pause and sometimes a bit of a click as it like selected the correct answer or whatever so yeah but yeah, it was it was pretty well done. You couldn't be sure at first that it wasn't actually a person talking, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't. So, because like they answered, and when you answered, they or when they called and you answered, they said, "Oh, it's so nice to hear a real person's voice," you know, instead of a machine, and uh, which made it sound more convincing, right? Than the ones that are obviously an auto dialer. Yeah, we get ones that go around every now and then here. Oh finish that stitch first okay so I don't normally park in the lower left however I've already pulled the thread up there and I'm going to come right back to it so I won't mix myself up anyway um we have one that goes around that will say you know this is officer smith and he has a warrant for your arrest and yeah they're trying to get your personal info and uh yeah so then people try to confirm they're not the person that supposed warrant is out on but then they end up giving you know like their date of birth and their social insurance number and like that kind of thing and yeah whoops <laughs> yeah so when i always tell people if there was a real warrant out for your arrest i'm pretty sure they have to like serve you with papers like by a person at any rate i highly doubt it would be a machine phoning you yeah People hear, oh, warrant for your arrest, and they get scared, even if they haven't done anything, right? So, yeah. Or there was one they had that, oh, your your social insurance number is suspended. That's um, in Canada, that's the equivalent of the social security number. I'm like, yeah, that that's not a thing. <laughs> yeah. And I was curious and Googled it, and yeah, it's a total scam. <laughs> Or I get ones that say, you know, your visa has been suspended. And I'm like, I don't even have a visa, so nice try. <laughs> but yeah, I did get one that called me once saying, oh, did you make a purchase in like Germany or something? I mean, Canada, so obviously. And they said, oh, it's fraudulent, fraudulent activity, so we'll send you a new card. And then the guy kept me talking and then he tried to get personal info like my pin out of me and i'm just like okay this is a scam and yeah hung up called the company myself and yeah they said nope there wasn't any any activity that was a scam but since i hadn't given him any actual information then they put a note to be on the guard in case there were any fraudulent charges but there weren't and that was that was like a year ago so yeah i think i'm good oh geez look at that do that I should really tuck my threads away more securely it wouldn't happen but oh well <laughs> but then sometimes they're a little overactive like we went to visit family which is in the neighboring province and my husband his card got declined when he tried to fill up with gas 
And we're like, you know, what the heck? We knew that we're nowhere near the limit on the card. And yeah, it was because it was in a different province. They thought that it was stolen. It's like, no, no, we actually <laughs> were traveling, I guess. Sometimes we do call them and like let them know so that doesn't happen. But we forgot this time. And usually they don't freeze the card. But uh, yeah, this time they did. So. Well, we went through a spate where card number got stolen like three different times in a year it was such a big pain they had to keep sending us new ones like we never had to pay for any of the charges obviously it was when it was proven that they were not ours but it was such a pain because i mean you have places where <clears throat> pardon me you signed up with a card to automate you know to auto pay every month if the card number changes it won't go through and then yeah either you get late fees or you just you got to remember all the places that you signed up with that card and call them up and give them the new number or sign in and give them the new number. And yeah, so it's a hassle. I mean, glad we don't have to pay for any of it, but yeah, it's still a pain. Well, anyway, yeah, I finally got that square done. We got over a hundred done and uh, I'm happy with that. So um, thank you so much for joining me today and I hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone.